Mexican food has been a staple of Mexico and her colonies for at least a really long time. Lady Mexico hath spread her bounty across the United States and in every place she's left a little kiss. But no place has she graced quite like Southern California with the highest treasure of them all, the burrito. Just anywhere you go on the beach in California, you see jocks playing football with burritos. You see people kinder, taller, richer, prettier, smarter than you. And in them you see burrito, 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 burrito. Burritos stand far above the rest in terms of portability, ease of use, ease of access, ease of play, compatibility. They can be used as a headrest, a footrest. They can keep your little toes warm. And when you're done with them, you just pop it in your mouth and eat it. They're edible. California has 22 statewide holidays dedicated to burritos. It's a sensation. But you show me a man with a burrito, and I'll show you a man with charisma, spontaneity, smartness, good, tall, future husband to the most beautiful woman in the whole world. But what, you say, I've never eaten a burrito. All I've ever eaten is me mum's fish head pie. And quite frankly, I find the whole idea quite reprehensible. What even is a burrito anyway? Well, Reginald, I'll tell you. I guarantee you by the end of this video, you'll be able to argue about burritos in an intelligent way with anybody at least east of Wyoming. When I say burrito, what are you thinking of? You thinking of this? Or this? This? Or this? You better be thinking about this, and not about this. Two ways a burrito can fall short of greatness. The bland way, and the bad, bad way. The first, the bland way. And this is what you get when you go over to Malcolm's house after a long day of soccer practice. Immediate, immediate, no, no. Immediate, immediate rice. It's immediately rice. You got your Mexican rice, your Mexican beans, your Mexican meat, your Mexican cheese, your Mexican sour cream, your lettuce, your water, because Malcolm isn't allowed to have soda or watch TV or anything like that. Now I want to say, this burrito, they tried to poison it with lettuce and they tried to poison it with beans and I had to tell them. I had to tell them very sternly. It has a lot of plain tasting ingredients, just leading to a really plain taste. And this is how this burrito was, it was just plain, just average. There's nothing offensive about it, nothing bad about it, just average. It's a burrito you can make in your house after going to Vons. And hey, they have their place in the world. Retirement communities go nuts over these things. Yahtzee night would be nothing without it. Make your own burrito. In the alleyway, lurking just behind, is the bad, bad burritos. These are the result of a poor process, ignorance, or just plain malice. Oh. granulated beef. It leaves a really bad aftertaste. The salsa. It's watery, it's got chunks in it, so it's a combination of water and earth. It's a marinara. I give this linguine a 9 out of 10. What's that? little shell. Maybe the, the cow shell, they forgot to husk it. But I got a little fun. Maybe I'm looking at this from the right angle. This burrito is bad. That's what it's like. It's like raccoon aftertaste. It's like what they experience after eating garbage. 
I feel so bad saying things like this. I can't eat it, Miguel, because I don't want to get sick, and I don't want to go if they have. So I have to. So I have to suffer. I have to be the big one. The meat was grainy and fell apart like clumps of wet sand and had an off taste. Not sure what caused it here because I'm not going to really call and ask. Oh, hey, what made your carne asada just polluted? But this can be caused by overcooking the meat, over marinating it, as some of the enzymes in the marinade can cause it to break down quicker than it would on its own, and generally using poor quality meat. This meat also had some grit. I don't know why. I would take a bite and at first I would taste the entire burrito. Then my palate would be overpowered by this dirty aftertaste. Lettuce degrades the dignity of a burrito. It's meant to be eaten by goats. If it's not properly washed, it makes the burrito taste like a garbage can. If it is properly washed, it makes the burrito taste like lettuce. So it's a lose, 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 lose situation. The tortilla was fine. It was a little flakier than I like it, but it was doing its best. The salsa was thick, which is fine. A lot of red sauces like that, but it just tasted like wonderful, rustic, just traditional, classic, all Italian marinara sauce. I'm guessing they either used Roma tomatoes or used tomato paste and cooked it down until it got co really concentrated, which is what gave it such a pronounced, strong tomato flavor. They, pro they also probably didn't balance it out with enough pepper now remember, this is a popular burrito where I went. 4.5 on Yelp, more than that on Google. You might like it. If you like it, you also might like gutter oil and dead bird food. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, okay? It's fine, it's fine. It was a California burrito, it didn't kill me. And all that wouldn't be a problem, save for one thing. This is a California burrito. Beef, french fries, cheese, guacamole, pico de gallo. I'm standing in front of the sculpture and I want to duck. He's giving this every ounce of energy he's got. Look at his eyebrows, the way they're knit together. Look at the way that he's biting his lips. The artist is observing, understands all of the naturalistic lessons that had been gained during the Renaissance, but is putting them towards an intense emotionalism. Good afternoon. Bernini's body is wound up and is about to release its energy. He's like a spring that's taut. And you're right, his body could never hold this position for more than a moment. We see a greater set of contrast between light and dark. With Bernini, because the form is crossing itself, you get these contrasts between highlights and shadows that further activate the sculpture. This is amazing. This is a California burrito. Beef, french fries, cheese, guacamole, Pico de Gallo. Originating in San Diego, this is THE burrito. No frills, only filled with stuff you want to eat, and every bite is a symphony. The meat is beautifully marinated. It breaks apart perfectly and easily. It's not too tough or chewy. It's soft. The tortilla is chewy and flavorful, rather than being dry and flaky and made with lard, so that it can be stretchy and has its own flavor. It becomes its own ingredient, not just a vessel for the other ingredients. The fries do a great job of balancing out the other flavors and are just crunchy enough on the ends to add a contrasting texture to the burrito. The pico is diced, but not too finely. Some bites you get a juicy tomato, adding some sweetness. Other bites you get a little bit of onion, adding some kick. And the sharpness of the cheese pierces through all the other flavors. It's, it's, it's perfect. And it doesn't have anything outside the tortilla.
It doesn't have rice in it. Rice, I didn't talk about that earlier. Rice is brittle and breaks apart in your mouth and adds like granules to the burrito, messing up the texture. Also, another thing that soaks up a lot of the palate and doesn't leave enough room for all the other flavors. When you have a burrito that's filled with really well marinated meat, really good cheese, really strong guac, wonderful ingredients, you don't want to dilute that with a filler like rice or beans. It doesn't have lettuce in it. I don't need to explain why that's good, okay? Go run some tests for yourself. First, go get a California burrito and eat it. Then, go to your backyard and eat some of the grass off your lawn. Figure out which one you like better. The guacamole is perfect. It's mild. It's not too intense. It just serves as a wonderful little avocado-y canvas for the other flavors. How do you rate a burrito? Much like Michelangelo's David, a burrito cannot be broken up into her component parts and judged separately from each other. Not every single bite of your burrito is going to have the perfect medley of all the ingredients. You're going to get a bite is eventually that's just tortilla, sour cream, and onion from the pico. And that bite is still called to greatness. Each burrito is an infinitude unto itself and impossible to analyze other than how much pleasure it provided you and its beauty. Don Bravo gets a 4 out of 5 and this is Burrito Review.